this lecture i will explain the most important and repeated problem on speed control of dc series motor and the last method is missing that is what leonard control method that is the most important and repeated question so coming to the problem the speed of a 50 kilowatts dc series motor working on 500 volts supply so first of all you should draw the dc series motor diagram this is dc series motor and the input is 500 volts supply this is plus sign minus this is 500 volts supply and it will be rotating at 750 rpm the voltage is 500 volts and the power output is equal to 50 kilowatts 50 kilowatts at full load and the efficiency will be 85 percentage that should be equal to 0 0.85 if the load torque is made a yes, slow torque is made 370 newton meter this the load torque uh, we can uh, yes, this you can write it as t1 why because uh, tl is called the last torque we are we are already assigned what is subscript l and 2 ohms resistance is connected in series with the machine okay so 2 ohms resistance is connected in series with the machine this is an uh, external resistance calculate the speed at which the machine will run assume that the magnetic circuit is unsaturated means unsaturated means the bh curve is linear the total resistance of the armature and feel the circuit is 0.5 so this is ra plus r RSC RA plus RSC RA plus RSC is equal to 0.5 ohms 0.5 ohms now I am adding an external resistance to the series field this is armature resistance is now armature resistance and the series field resistance is 0.5 ohms and external resistance what is how much external resistance is added now that is point how much it will be added 2 ohms resistance is added so this is 2 ohms resistance is added so this is a 500 volt supply the supply voltage is same now let us say this speed n1 okay so how can you calculate the input power power output by efficiency why because efficiency is equal to output power divided by input power so output power divided by input power so power output divided by efficiency so 50 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by efficiency is 0.85 so efficiency is 0.85 so finally i got it as 58.8235 kilowatts that is called the input power and uh, i1 is equal to input power divided by supply voltage so no, power is equal to vi for a dc power so 58.8235 divided by supply voltage is 500 then i got it as 117.647 ampere this one is called the ia1 and the torque T1 is equal to EB1 into IA1 divided by 2 pi N1 by 60. Why? Because the power is equal to omega T. So torque is equal to power divided by omega. This is EB into IA divided by 2 pi N by 60. What is the back EMF? So back EMF you have to calculate. IA1 is known and the n1 is also known so eb1 is equal to v minus ia1 into ra plus rsc so we can calculate the back emf without external resistance so 500 minus ia1 is 117.647 into ra plus rsc is 0.5 
that should be equal to 441.176 volts. Substitute here 441.176 into IA1 is 117.647 divided by 2 pi into what is the speed N1? The speed N1 is 750 rpm divided by 60. That should be equal to that should be equal to 660.849 newton meter. So the back the with the back MF is uh, find out the by using this formula. After that, the back M is substituted in this equation, then I got the torque T1. So the T2 is given 370 Newton meter with Rx value is 2 ohms added in the circuit. Added in the circuit. So this is a T2 as T2 is equal to 370 Newton meter. Yes, if the low torque is made, yes, made 370 Newton meter, if the low torque is made 370 Newton meter and a 2 ohms resistance is added, this torque is not T1, that is T2, T2. Then the torque is directly proportional to flux into IA and the flux is directly proportional to series current and uh, directly proportional to IA because it is a series circuit in the first circuit and second circuit flux is directly proportional to IAC why because we are connecting an external resistance in series with the armature then torque is directly proportional to IA square T1 divided by T2 is equal to IA1 divided by IA2 whole square IA1 whole square so 660.849 divided by 376 is equal to 117.647 by IA2 whole square. So if you apply root to this one and solve, then I got it as 88.03 amperes. So 88.03 amperes. Then the back MF EB2 is equal to V minus IA2 into RA plus RSC plus an external resistance. In the second case, this is 500 minus 88.03.5 plus the Rx value. What is the Rx value? The Rx value we are connecting is 2. Yes, the external resistance is 2. That is 2.5. So finally, I got it as 279.925 volts. And N is directly proportional to EB by 5. N1 divided by N2 is equal to EB1 by EB2 into 52 divided by 51. And 750 divided by N2 is equal to 441 point. How much you are getting EB1? EB1 is 4.441.176. EB2 is 279.925 and uh, this phi2 is equal to uh, is directly proportional to IA2 phi1 is directly proportional to IA1 the IA2 IA2 what is our IA2 value is 88.03 so this one is 117.647 so finally I got it as uh, N2 is equal to 635.1359 rpm so once again those song lesson the speed of a 50 kilowatt dc series motor this 50 kilowatt dc series motor this is called the output power working on 500 volts supply is 750 rpm at full load see he is given at full load yes or no at efficiency is 85 percentage then you can calculate the input power so input power is equal to what is the input power is equal to output power divided by efficiency if the low torque is made made 370 rpm 
and a 2 ohms resistance is connected in series with the machine calculate the speed at which the machine will run so initially ra plus rsc is equal to 0.5 is given as uh, the total resistance of armature and field circuit is 0.5 so after that uh, a 2 ohms resistance is included see and in the first case and second case the flux which is produced by the series field winding is directly proportional to armature current only the flux which is produced to see in the first case also why because it is in series with the armature it is in series with armature it is not diverted so first of all find out the back emf1 so in overall conclusion of speed control of dc series motor or dc shunt motor find out the eb yes eb1 and eb2 n is directly proportional to eb divided by 5 and uh, some hint is given in each problem if you thoroughly following my class then you will easily understand in some of the problems is given torque is directly proportional to n in some of the problems is given torque is directly proportional to n square so then t1 by t2 you can substitute as n1 by n2 if the torque is directly proportional to n if t1 by t2 you can substitute as n1 divided by n2 whole square if torque is directly proportional to n square like that uh, so you should substitute uh, all the values one step by step you can solve it definitely you will get a uh, final answer and the next method is the most important method that is called the ward leonard system of speed control here I want to control this main motor speed. So I want to control the speed of the main motor where M1 is called the main motor. What is M1 is called the main motor and G is called the generator. Generator and M2 is called the auxiliary motor. Auxiliary motor. So here I am taking uh, DC supply plus sign minus uh, the, the supply which is given to the field winding of main motor is fixed. Once again listen the supply the supply which is given to the supply which is given to the field winding of field winding of main motor is fixed so we are not wearing this one so the generator output see the generator field is also connecting like this we are providing a reverse switch this is the reverse switch okay so while we are connecting in this position the plus is connected to here and minus is connected here so if you are connecting in a reverse fashion reverse fashion means what will happen this v is plus and this one is sorry this v is minus and this one is plus so the top one is plus and this bottom is minus and here this one is minus and the bottom one is plus we can change the direction by by moving the switch so this one is plus and minus okay so this is plus and this one is minus if the switch is at this position and then it will be minus and it will be plus okay and uh, in order to run the generator we require a prime mover okay the generator we need mechanical input we need a mechanical input the motor output is also mechanical output that's why in order to drive this uh, generator of armature conductors we require a motor and the motor is normally supplied okay the motor is uh, armature and uh, the field is supplied with same excitation 
same excitation. See, you can observe if this is switch is closed and plus is given to here and minus is given to here and field winding and armature winding is so you can see here field this one is field winding and armature winding is connected in parallel so for a plus we are connecting one terminal of the armature and one terminal of the field so this is one terminal of the field one terminal of the armature so if you go for this one and one terminal of the field one terminal of the armature so we are connecting a parallel so the motor is runs at rated speed the generator is also produces uh, a voltage what we are doing means yes what is our point the first point is the field winding of a dc motor is excited with the constant supply so by varying this uh, rheostat or potential divider the potential divider if zero volts is applied for zero volts is applied for a generator for a generator if a zero volts is applied to the field if this generator is driven with prime over only the residual voltage will be present a small voltage that is called the residual voltage residual voltage so the voltage will be appeared across this uh, motor that means uh, armature across this armature the speed is directly proportional to v divided v okay so v divided by phi the phi is constant or eb is directly proportional to n phi and n is directly proportional to eb by phi and uh, voltage across the armature divided by phi now i am not changing this phi this phi is constant this phi is constant it's okay uh, and uh, so now i am writing here because uh, uh, okay n is n is directly proportional to ev by 5 and 5 is constant and is directly proportional to voltage across the armature voltage across the armature so if i am increasing this uh, current flowing through the field winding yes if the current flowing through the field winding is increases then the number of flux lines is increases how we can increase the field current as the voltage which is applied is increases with the help of a potential divider then current which is flowing through field winding is also increases and the number of flux lines is also increases the cutting action increases and the generated emf is increases if the generated emf is increases and the voltage which is applied across armature both are same and va increases the speed is also increases and the smooth speed is possible by using uh, this method generally this method is used uh, in hoist uh, this method is used in hoist and elevators and uh, the main disadvantage means we require three machines uh, the cost of this uh, arrangement is more so uh, i think you understand guys see once again i am explaining what is the wadley unit system of speed control means I want to control this uh, main motor uh, speed and the field winding of the main motor is excited with constant supply and the flux is constant and the generator if the generator output voltage is fed to the motor that means armature if the armature voltage is controlled then the speed is also controlled in order to run the generator we are giving a mechanical input for that we need additional machine this machine is called the auxiliary motor and the field winding and armature winding of uh, motor is excited with same supply and here suppose uh, if the motor direction i want to reverse it reverse it then this reverse switch will be closed uh, now this terminal is negative this terminal is positive and the field current will be flows in opposite direction then the number of flux lines are produced in an opposite direction the motor rotation is also if the reverse voltage will be applied to the armature then the armature is rotating in reverse direction okay so i think you understand the wadley unit speed control thank you guys